We will now discuss the two main methods for transferring charge between objects. They are called conduction and induction. At the highest level, conduction just means you have two objects touching each other, physically touching. Induction, you will bring objects close to each other and we will see how charge can be separated and transferred under those conditions. Before we can talk about conduction and induction, we need to define the concept of the ground. We've already shown how electrons can flow within objects, whether they are conductors or insulators. They can also flow between them. They can also flow from the Earth, which is an excellent conductor, to the objects, and from the objects to the Earth. Earth serves as the ultimate source and destination for electrons because of its huge size. The overall charge on the Earth is not going to be affected terribly by charges moving from small objects to it or in the other direction. Grounding will also be discussed further in the electric potential chapter of this course. When a conducting wire is attached between the Earth and another conductor, excess electrons will flow to the Earth, leaving the conductor neutral. This is called grounding. For example, if you have an object that has an excess, of an excess number of electrons and it gets conducted to ground, those electrons will be attracted to the ground They'll go back to the Earth, leaving the conductor neutral. Conversely, if you have net positive charge on an object, electrons will be attracted from the Earth. They will come up. They will balance out the charge. It will stay neutral. So, if you touch an object with a net negative charge, you may get a shock. This is because that conductor wants to get rid of its excess electrons. They will flow through you to the ground. If the conductor had an excess positive charge, the electrons would flow the opposite way from the earth through you to the conductor. In either case, there is a spark. You can notice this during the winter, especially when the air is pretty dry. If you shuffle your feet on a rug and build up a charge, and then you go ahead and touch a metal door handle, you'll see a little shock. You'll see a little blue, tiny lightning bolt, frankly. It's the same as lightning, just much smaller. That will be the charge going back to ground. When this concept first came out, grounding was actually called earthing because of the relationship to the charges going to and from the earth, and in Europe sometimes you will see folks talking about earthing as opposed to grounding. It is the same topic. In the last slide we showed how a buildup of electric charge on a door handle or on your person by scuffling your feet on the carpet in the winter time can cause a small current to flow through you into the ground. That's annoying, hurts a little bit, but will cause no real damage. However, in the house we use objects that draw quite a bit of current and have a lot of electric charge that if there are frayed wires or a defect in the equipment could build up a large charge so that if you were to touch it, it would flow through you and cause great damage to you. So circuits and devices are usually grounded to protect them from accumulating that net charge that could shock you. To ground an electrical device, a conductor must be run from the device into the ground, giving a path to ground for the excess charge. Plugs for many electrical devices have a third grounding pin. You can see it up here, this little guy right here, that has a wire that conducts typically to a metal pipe in your basement, a plumbing pipe perhaps, that eventually is, has another wire going from it into the ground. This will enable any excess charge to flow through that wire into the ground instead of through you into the ground, which is a lot safer.